Live! Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live AMA where we answer your reverse engineering questions. If you like this kind of stuff, go check out our Patreon. Lots more reverse engineering content there. With that, let's get into it. No, 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 uh, no, do no you wanna, go, I, go for rattle. The rattle. Yeah, I, I suck <laughs> out of the, the various chats and the first one I have in here is does CTF reverse engineering challenges uh, offer a good practical introduction to malware analysis. So do do C basically do CTFs help with malware analysis? I can't really comment on it that well because I haven't played many CTFs. No. Sergey says no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would I hate also, CTFs. Yeah. Fuck off with I your could CTFs. Maybe say a few words about that. Oh yeah, go oh, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so um it kind of depends on which CTF you are playing, to be honest. Uh, a lot of these CTFs uh, that I have played, at least, uh, that are like Jeopardy style stuff, um, they have this ref category. Um, but usually the ref category is, is kind of like very, um, how do you say? Um, they're very specific binaries, not really actual malware stuff. Um, but if you do a CTF like Flareon, for instance, um, especially like if you go a few years, a few back, a few years back, um, yeah. I think it was 2020. They actually had a, a proper sample of uh, the, some banking trojan that you had to analyze. Uh, so it, it really, I think it really depends. Yeah, Flare, Flareon being the major exception there, and like the yeah. modern years, I'm not so hot on. But you're right, the early years were pretty pretty similar to malware in fact they basically that that's actually basically one of the best speed tests if you want to see how good you're yep. going to be at reversing malware those early flare challenges are, are perfect for that yeah, uh, that's that is, yeah. Uh, i would agree. i don't think it actually counts as a ctf but this particular sites where i did some memory analysis ctfs actually had one which was just here is Zeus bot. Reverse Zeus bot and give us the flag from somewhere inside. So yeah, that's that's good. That's good practice, but that's also cheating, I guess, because it's just malware analysis <laughs> just malware. with a flag on the end. <laughs> Outsourced malware analysis. Yeah. They're basically asking you to do your job. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> we should ask Jordan right. though, because I know Jordan is on the other side of the fence. I think. <laughs> I, I don't think you're wrong though honestly like I would say um so I you know I, I, st I came more from like vulnerability research side and CTS were actually pretty surprisingly relevant but th there's always been a stronger pwn influence in a lot of CTFs and again depending on what CTFs you play like uh, you know defcon finals are entirely network defense host based defense and, and exploitation and patching like that that's it um, so it, it just depends on like the CTF, obviously flare, but there are, there are some other good ones. I think somebody in chat mentioned just some forensics ones too. So there are some, um, although part of the problem there is that like forensics, like way back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, CTF, um, forensics kind of got a bad rap amongst some of like the most active CTF teams, um, because they were really annoying, stupid forensics challenges. They weren't good ones. Uh, and so as a category, it got downplayed in a lot of CTFs for a long time. Uh, I mean, to be fair, like even web did. There was a long time where like web challenges were considered lame yeah. and like not good on like a lot of CTFs, and that's just because the challenges weren't good, and, and not because they, like there couldn't be good challenges. So there's been a, like a nice resurgence in web lately on CTF, and so I think the same thing is possible um, with malware. You just don't see it because there tends to be kind of different groups of people, but you can still learn a lot of really useful skills. So again, it goes back to the top topic earlier. If it's fun and you like it then it works and if it's not then it, it doesn't so it's from some people it will some people it won't but yeah it definitely depends a lot on the ctf that you're gonna you're gonna find so jordan there's a there's a pretty specific follow-up from the chat uh somebody asked like what what, are you, what is your opinion about sites like uh, htv which you think is hack the box yeah hack the box uh, so <laughs> spill it okay so there's, there's two... <laughs> uh, on, on the one hand um don't hold back on the <laughs> I got the one hand links about HTV to be honest. It's yeah, like they're yeah, very it, fabricated it, sometimes these challenges. Yeah. Um, but sometimes they can be really good as well. Um, personally, I really like the the uh, the the boxes, the machines that you have to get into. Um, those yeah. I think are relatively uh, representative. Um, but yeah, the other other stuff can be very fabricated in my opinion. 
Yeah, and and sometimes fabricated is okay because yeah. like, you know, people go to the gym to get better at, at a exactly. sport, yeah. not because it's directly the same, but just because generally it builds up your skills and it's strength and it's better. And so like, getting better at these other random things can help you. Um, there's also there's also a lot of them that are like, the trend now is to have a bunch of paid services, um, that a lot of people are are like, oh, if I pay money, this must be better. What I'll say is that. Paying money doesn't mean that the service has better challenges, but sometimes for some people, paying money means you're gonna like take care, you're gonna care for it more, you're gonna treat it as more valuable, and you're gonna put the time into it because you've paid for it. So I generally don't think the quality of the paid services are all that much better than anything else, but it's still actually a decent brain hack to get you to care about it for some people. Um, so yeah, and Hack the Box has has good stuff. Some of them I, I a couple of them I really like. A couple of them are fine. <laughs> that's about all it's about the worst i'll say it's not bad like i mean it's I think tangent it's... but i have to say it's as a german i just love the american scale of evaluating things in terms of how good they are and that it's fine is like among the lowest of the low like it's... <laughs> in german in german it wouldn't be it i mean it's like the the ig well, and for uh, for ranking things yeah. where anything uh, under a seven is absolute dog <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, we're closer to Russians, where like everything is like, meh, not yeah, bad. That's actually pretty good praise. That's high praise if it's not bad. Yeah, it, it's not bad in German. Is one of the highest. Like it's one of the depending on inflection yeah. is one of the best things you can say about something. Uh, even when when you get food here and people say you can eat it, it means it's it's. Very yeah. well. <laughs> like saying this is edible. <laughs> this yeah. High praise. <laughs> high praise. <laughs> okay, sorry about the tangent. Um, well, and I will clarify. I I don't dislike Hack in the Box. Don't make don't make my um, don't take no that went the wrong way. I do think it's fine. It's, I think there is there's a lot of other ones that are far worse. One it's thing already about Hack in the Box. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they actually sorted that thing out because I always thought it was like a kind of mistake. Maybe it's intentional and they actually hate forensics, but one thing that always got me confused was, okay, you do, you actually hack the boxes and you get like, I don't know, 25 points for something that's easy and it scales up from there. And I remember the, reversing and uh, forensics challenges they gave you a lot less points I, I remember doing some memory analysis challenges and getting like five points and i'm like why why do you guys hate memory this much so uh, that's interesting because well, i have exactly the same or i have i have exactly the opposite experience with the ctfs that i played actually where the refs are actually more points and the forensics are also more points than the others. Uh, but maybe that's so, really so what I will say is lately, the trend in CTF organizers has been to move to self-balancing, which I think is a really yeah. good for, especially for the ones that are timed events, like over a weekend or whatever. I think it's, it's maybe less true for like the long running ones. I mean, it's the same thing still applies, right? Where it starts out at like 500 or whatever the point range is. And then the more people solve it, the, the less it gets, which is really fair, yeah. right? In terms of like, well, if everybody got it, it must've been easy, even if you thought it was hard, so. That could just be more representative of who's playing the events. Oh, I would yeah, maybe... yeah, that's good. That's good play a part because I remember a lot of the forensic stuff was actually pretty trivial to solve. Like, oh, get the flag and you I had to have the right tool. Yeah, yeah, you just had to have the right tool. That was for a long time. Forensics yeah. categories in CTS were just run the right stego tool run the right analysis tool figure yeah. out the flag for that Both thing and then we're done. like yeah here's a cheat sheet for volatility yeah right. you beat it so yeah yeah <laughs> okay I will, I will close this or i mean unless somebody else has something with a perspective of somebody who's not experienced I, at ctfs i have one you have one Go. um maybe it can be the last one um, I hate most CTFs as of late, um, that I participated in. I'll be completely honest. I won a CTF once with a friend, an IOT hacking challenge, hacking cameras and routers and such. That one was pretty entertaining. Um, but for the most part, like, you know, for, for certain ones, I'll find like, okay, there's one where we like pwned 
everything. Like there is nothing left to rip gapingly openly bad. And it's like, where is the frigging flag? Like, is it in the home directory? Is it in the, like, that was so damn annoying. It's like, you open the gates of gates of hell, but it's like, you know, you done everything that could be done. It's like, well, where did they put the flag? Right. So there was times where that was annoying. Um, and then the other thing that I, that like, as soon as I get on a question in a CTF that has a word riddle, I'm out. That's it. I'm done. Yeah, riddles are the worst. <laughs> I, I, I hate, hate worst. word riddles. Like, tell me what you want. I'll go do it. But I'm not going to play, like, I'm not going to play that. The... The first thing you said, that leads me to one thing I have to say about CTS, because I played Flareon this year and I played it last year, and there is one, only one significant difference that I see like from an abstract level between actual reverse engineering and CTFs, and it's not even that a CTF challenge is fabricated, it's that you know it's fabricated. In a malware sample, when I look at something in the code, there's always some uncertainty whether does it matter what I'm looking at mm -hmm. right now? And for a CTF challenge, I know that like, or in, at least I haven't seen any because that would, that would maybe be a nice addition. But when I'm looking at something, I know this probably matters. This will play a part in solving it. Like everything, like this is engineered. I know there, there's like, when, when there's seven sections with weird random data in it, then these sections will play a role. They will matter. If it's a malware sample, it could just be junk. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> could be porn. Who knows? It could be porn. <laughs> yeah. So what I... you're saying is we should just junk the shit out of challenges now? Yes. Yeah. That no, would make them no, you should not. No, that is, that no is you actually, should not. That is because that's what people like bad. about CTFs. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, actually that's actually very the... bad. I, I see think a there lot is a balance, people... though. In... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I see a lot of people, especially in the .NET scene, where yeah. I recently <laughs> I dabbled into, yeah, into Crack Me or like, CTFs, there's like a few servers that have like channels where people upload their own challenges. That's like, I don't want to be mean, but many of these people don't understand, don't understand basic concepts of software security. So their challenges tend to be very bad. Like what they do as a challenge, they have a hard coded key somewhere and then they just slap tons of obfuscation on top of it. And then they are like, how can you solve it in two minutes? And that's more representative of malware, though. I mean, yes, yeah, that's that malware, is true, like... <laughs> but it's like still a bad chance. But chan does it make it a good CTF same. challenge? Exactly. Yeah, no, it yeah. doesn't make yeah. it a good. And that's maybe the difference that uh, really is. Most of yeah. them, like, you, we could at a point we wrote, Washi wrote a script for WinDVG, and I wrote a tool which I put on GitHub that auto solves these challenges by just hooking the string comparison and then waiting <laughs> yeah. for it to compare the string and then just here's mm. your key. You solved it. Nice. Which like, is, uh, it was like and this the, worked the, the for like ninety percent of everything. all the challenges on that server, which was like, yeah. you guys really need to get more original with this. That okay, script we will, worked I, so. Ooh, yeah. We should do this. Uh, you should do the. Um, Sorry, go ahead. There's, there's, there's another one, by the way, that people have used a lot in rever more reversing challenges in CTFs, where you use a uh, like pin tool or anything to do like instruction Great. count guessing. So things where they're doing like character at a time com comparison yeah. or checking yeah. or whatever you brute force by doing total like total counts so that's that'll get like when they get a little the smarter then counts. that'll be the next tool that you run yeah exactly yeah. all you literally do is maximize for instruction count comparisons and then just brute force you can solve yeah, it. i have yeah. to stop this crowd from now digressing into a nitty-gritty technical discussion about how about all the or, well, about <laughs> ctf challenges and i will i will just moderate into the next question so that wraps it up. Big thanks to our panel of experts. You can go check out their socials here. Thank you very much. And if you guys want to see more reverse engineering content like this, in-depth tutorials, live streams, your questions answered, go check out our Patreon. Lots more stuff like that there. And stay tuned for the next question.